Learning to drive. Learning to drive. No problem. This should be easy. I could do it with my eyes closed. Lacking in foresight of the numerous pitfalls and being too generous in the estimation of my own people skills, I made the fateful decision to be Katarina's driving coach. I quickly found it to be extremely challenging to fill the dual roles of new husband and driving instructor with Katarina. She had a strong aversion to being told what to do, especially by her husband. She had been forewarned that one of the allures of a foreign bride was the myth that such a woman comes to the United States and happily becomes a domestic slave doing housework all day, cleaning the kitchen, washing her husband's clothes, and cooking and preparing meals. She had a very different vision, that she would arrive as a princess who would need to be entertained and her every need cared for by a wealthy husband. Essential to her new role as princess were Katerina's laws, which brings us to Katerina's first law. Never tell me what to do. And, of course, the corollary to Katerina's first law. If you do tell me what to do, even if you are correct, and even if I agree with you, you will never find out that I agree. And furthermore, to make this law clear to you, I will do something else, as the highest priority above all else is to preserve Katarina's first law. Unfortunately, Katarina's first law was at direct odds with her non-existent driving skills and a contradiction to the rules of the road, especially the first rule, when in doubt, yield. Occasionally when I warned her that she was about to veer off to the side of the road and hit a pedestrian, she would temporarily suspend Katarina's first law and heed my warning without resentment. But other times when she didn't see a red light or a stop sign, she would become very annoyed and invoke Katarina's first law almost verbatim. Don't ever tell me what to do, especially when I'm trying to concentrate on something like learning to drive. You will probably think I am prone to hyperbole and crass exaggeration when I describe my first experience as Katarina's driving coach. But please, bear in mind, I come from the old school thinking of such things as safety first, look both ways, check the rearview mirror, when in doubt drive extra cautiously. Add to that my natural inclination to try to protect a new car from scratches and dents as long as possible, and you have an almost polar opposite to the viewpoint of my new driving pupil. Katerina was right at home and in her element on the Santa Monica Pier on the Bump and Fun car ride, a philosophy which she instinctively understood and would have gladly carried with zeal to the Santa Monica Freeway if given the opportunity, a philosophy born out of the theory that the right of way belongs to the person who gets there first, who has the fastest car, or heaven forbid, refuses to chicken out. Before her first driving lesson, Katerina was preparing herself for the moment not by studying her driver's education booklet and not by taking a few deep breaths to relax and remain calm, but by fixing her hair and selecting the proper attire with which to make her debut on the American roadways. Of uppermost concern were her choice of dark glasses and which purse to bring. She solved the dark glasses dilemma with a new pair she had acquired at Nordstrom's just last week, but she was struggling with which purse to bring. She seemed happy when I suggested anything that goes well with red or black. I have the perfect one. It is one of my favorites. Black leather with red accent stitching and red trim on the strap. And a red button which will pick up the red exterior. The black will, of course, match the interior's black leather. And best of all, can you believe it? I bought it in Stuttgart, only a few miles away from Daimler Chrysler World Headquarters. I was able to convince her to skip the high heels because no one would see her feet while she was driving and they might hamper her control of the foot pedals. I backed the car out of the garage and onto the driveway. This was a quiet roadway with almost no traffic and only rarely did it have any pedestrians. A pedestrian, if any were to appear, would typically be one of the homeowners strolling up to the gazebo that housed the community mailboxes. My plan was to have Katerina drive to one of the large parking lots adjacent to the Glendale Civic Auditorium. Katerina got behind the wheel and I coached her to start very cautiously and slowly until she gets the hang of it. Everything was okay for the first 100 feet. At that point, the road had a sharp left turn, followed by a sharp right turn. As soon as we approached the first turn, it became abundantly apparent that Katerina was having great difficulty in steering the car. She did not turn the steering wheel soon enough to avoid the curb and plowed into it after traveling only about 100 feet. This time, she saw the curb and was trying to avoid it, but obviously did not have a feel for how this car responded to the steering wheel. We made the next turn okay and were now headed up the short piece of roadway that led to the community center. 
Unfortunately, two unwitting pedestrians were walking alongside the road. Katerina had only been behind the wheel for about 45 seconds, but when she saw the pedestrians, who she knew were likely to be neighbors, astonishingly enough, her reaction was not to slow down and proceed carefully with due caution, but inexplicably, it was to check in the rearview mirror to see if her hair was in place, and as she did so, the car began to drift directly toward the pedestrians. The two unwitting pedestrians, not realizing that a very, very green student driver was behind the wheel, were in complete disbelief of the rapidly developing fact that they were about to be run down by such a slow-moving car on a very quiet residential roadway. They did not take evasive actions until it became undeniably apparent that they would be mowed down in Katerina's path if they did not get out of the way. In the next instant, they got the message loud and clear when they saw Katerina was adjusting her hair with the rearview mirror, and without another moment to spare, both of them jumped over the curb and into a flower bed. The expression on their faces were hard to describe. Katerina's eyes also bulged with disbelief when she returned her gaze back to the road and was horrified to see two of her neighbors jumping up and into the flower bed to avoid being struck by the car she was now driving. She instantly complained. What is wrong with this car? It drifts all over the place all by itself. The steering wheel is off-center and reacts too much or not at all. And as she uttered those words, she realized what was happening and pulled the steering wheel hard to the right, greatly overcompensating the amount necessary to bring the car back to its correct lane position. So much so that she ended up just clipping the curb on her right before she finally got the car back under control. We had been driving for less than 1,000 feet and had almost run over two pedestrians. As we approached Verdugo Avenue, I was having second thoughts about Katerina driving over to the Civic Center parking area. Traffic situations and her driving skills would mix like oil and water. Right then, I decided it would be prudent to turn right on Verdugo. It was a wide street with two lanes in each direction and lightly traveled at this hour. It would be good practice to see if Katerina could steer the car well enough to stay in the right-hand lane without drifting. Once again, conditions were perfect, or so I thought. There was no moving traffic in either direction, just a few cars parked on the side of the road. I was confident nothing could go wrong, but just as I completed that thought and felt a little more relaxed, a pickup truck pulling a horse trailer that was parked on the right side of the road about an eighth of a mile ahead put on his left blinker and started to very slowly pull out onto the road, intending to occupy the right-hand lane, the same lane that Katerina was now occupying. Katerina had two logical choices. One, slow down and stay in the same lane at a safe distance behind the pickup and horse trailer, or two, change to the left-hand lane and pass the pickup and the horse trailer, which were moving very, very slowly. What happened next was another possibility which I had not thought of. Katerina continued on as if she had the right of way, which she did, and put the onus of getting out of the way onto the very slowly moving pickup and horse trailer, which were soon to be fully occupying the lane in front of us. She was playing chicken with a parked car that was pulling out in front of her. A dangerous situation indeed, but in Glendale, California, it happens all the time. At that very moment, for some odd reason, I was thinking of the old saying found on the tombstone, famous last words, I had the right of way. I knew for sure that the driver of the pickup was not going to get out of the way, not pulling that horse trailer, and not at the very slow speed he was moving. And it was apparent that Katerina either did not see him or thought it was up to him to get out of the way. She exuded the attitude of, I am in my lane and following the speed limit. So if something else is wrong, it must be the other driver's error and it is their responsibility to fix it, not mine. Bearing in mind my first experience as Katerina's driving coach at the IMAX parking lot, I realized this time it was up to me. So I said, Katerina, that pickup truck and horse trailer are pulling out in your lane, so you need to slow down or change lanes. I probably said too much too quickly, and giving her a choice was not a good idea either. Katerina quickly invoked Katerina's first law and screamed back at me in a very upset voice. Don't tell me what to do, especially when I'm seriously concentrating on learning to drive. You are distracting me, and I don't know what you are talking about. I only had enough time to scream back, stop immediately or you will crash. Luckily, this got her attention, and as she applied the brake, I grabbed the steering wheel out of her hands and changed lanes for her. This action of mine was not greeted warmly with thank you for helping to avoid an accident. It was greeted with the invocation of Katerina's corollary to the first law, namely, preserve the first law at all costs. Jonathan, you should never tell me what to do. Driving is very hard, and I cannot do it if you are going to sit there and tell me what to do. I cannot concentrate under those circumstances. 
I replied, the purpose of a learner's permit license is so that you can be coached. You can learn from my experience and I can help you avoid accidents. My life is in your hands when you are behind the wheel. If I believe you are about to have an accident, it is my duty and it is imperative that I speak up immediately, regardless of what else is happening at the time. Katerina, being ever aware of the importance of preserving Katerina's first law, countered back with, Okay, then I want a professional driver's education coach from a well-respected company.